In a time of strict puritanical rule, where secrets are whispered and sins concealed, one woman's transgression ignites a scandal that echoes through the ages. On March 16, 1850, The Scarlet Letter is published. Nathaniel Hawthorne is born in Salem, Massachusetts in 1804. Infamous witch trials occurred there more than 100 years earlier during the Puritan era. Hawthorne attends Bowdoin College in Brunswick, Maine, then returns to Salem and begins his writing career. He self-publishes his first book, Fanshawe, in 1828, but tries to destroy all copies shortly thereafter. He then takes to writing short stories, publishing them in magazines and later in book collections, the most famous of which is called Twice Told Tales. His second novel is one of the greatest ever written, The Scarlet Letter. It is set in 17th century Massachusetts and tells the story of Hester Prynne, who births a child out of wedlock in this strict Puritan society. Hawthorne immerses the reader in that society and deftly explores the themes of sin, guilt, forgiveness, and redemption. The book is a bestseller and makes Hawthorne a household name. Stay tuned as we learn about one of Hawthorne's ancestors, who is also a significant historical figure. We'll also learn more about Hawthorne's life and his marriage. And I'll give you my personal introduction to Hawthorne that I experienced nearly 35 years ago. Don't forget to check out Today in History in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. There's a link in the description. So Hawthorne's great-great-grandfather, John Hathorne, served as one of the judges during the infamous Salem Witch Trials. Throughout his life, Nathaniel Hawthorne seems to be both fascinated and disturbed by his kinship with Judge Hathorne. Hawthorne adds the W to his name in his 20s. It is believed that the author may have done so because he was ashamed of Judge Hathorne's role in the Salem Witch Trials and wanted to separate himself from the mistakes of this ancestor. Hawthorne takes a job at the Boston Custom House in 1839. His time there likely inspires the famous introduction to the Scarlet Letter, which features a Salem Custom House, and a worker there who discovers a Scarlet Letter A, and the manuscript of the story that follows the book's introduction. In 1841, Hawthorne lives for six months in a transcendentalist utopian commune known as Brook Farm, but becomes frustrated by the long hours of manual labor, which leave him little time to write. His experience, though, inspires his satirical 1852 novel, The Blythedale Romance. Hawthorne marries painter and illustrator Sophia Peabody in 1842. Before their marriage, she suffered from frequent severe migraines, which appear to have eased greatly after their marriage. I would like to know their secret for migraines. That'd be great. The Hawthorns settle in Concord, Massachusetts, and appear to have had a happy and loving marriage. Nathaniel writes of Sophia, My wife is, in the strictest sense, my sole companion, and I need no other. There is no vacancy in my mind any more than in my heart. I can definitely relate. Mrs. Lewis is amazing. In 1853, Hawthorne's old college friend, U.S. President Franklin Pierce, appoints Hawthorne as U.S. Consul in Liverpool, England, where the Hawthorns live for three years. Years after returning home, Hawthorne begins complaining of a stomach ailment and decides to take a recuperative trip with his friend and now former president, Franklin Pierce. During the trip, Hawthorne dies in his sleep in Plymouth, New Hampshire in 1864 at the age of 59. My personal introduction to Nathaniel Hawthorne came as a 10th grader at dear old Davis High School. My English teacher was a legend at the school named Ken Cook. In his class, we got to learn about Mr. Cook's time living in Samoa, while viewing his iconic colored slides. And yes, he was very particular about the pronunciation of Samoa, not Samoa, Samoa. Mr. Cook required every student to make cookbooks, which were a series of spiral notebooks, each focusing on a different topic, like 
vocabulary, grammar, literature, etc. The literature cookbook included a section on American authors. This was more than 30 years ago, but if I remember it right, the first author in the literature cookbook was Washington Irving, whom Mr. Cook called the first recognized American author and made sure we all jotted that down in our cookbooks. Then came James Fenimore Cooper, the first important American author. And he, Mr. Cook made sure we wrote that down as well. And then it was Nathaniel Hawthorne, who Mr. Cook proclaimed was the first great American author. Now, I remember at the time thinking these were official titles, not just Mr. Cook's personal, although logical, opinions about these authors. Not sure why I remember all this so vividly. The following year, in Janine Hill's 11th grade English class, we read The Scarlet Letter, and it has been one of my favorite novels ever since. It so effectively immerses you in that Puritan society. It's, it's a brilliant work, and it certainly makes Nathaniel Hawthorne worthy of the title, First Great American Author. If you've never read it, you definitely should, like right now. Well, maybe after you finish this video, but soon. And if you like what you've seen here today, please make sure to like and subscribe. There are more videos that you can watch, including this one about the attack on Deerfield, Massachusetts during the Puritan era, and this other great Mr. Lewis video right here. Thanks for watching.